Monster Hunter Stories is a turn-based RPG for the 3DS based within the Monster Hunter universe. It's sort of like a Pokemon Monster Hunter mashup, but it really is a lot of fun. Here are 11 tips and tricks that may help you as you play Monster Hunter Stories. Now there are a few ways to dish out some extra pain in battles, and by taking advantage of these uh, pretty simple techniques, I'd say it'll help you survive a little bit longer or help you kill your enemies a little bit faster. For starters, if your monster is using a basic attack, let's say speed, and the opposing monster is using a regular power attack, your monster will obviously win the encounter and it'll deal extra damage. But if you also attack the same monster and use a basic speed attack, both you and your monster will attack simultaneously. This only works with basic attacks. So neither your monster nor your hunter can be using a skill. This double attack does a ton of extra damage and it also fills up a large portion of your ride on meter. So you could use those special attacks even more often. You could also perform a lesser type of combo. I'm not really sure what these are called. All you need to do is just change the order of your attack types. For example, if you use a speed attack three times in a row, you'll get a bonus speed attack. It does a little bit of extra damage and just generally makes me feel better. So I don't know how effective it is, but it's just something that you should always know about. I know if you use the hunting horn, there are a ton more of these combinations. When you hatch an egg, Navi will usually have a comment about the egg. Usually these comments relate to the smell and the weight of the egg, but these comments actually have a deeper meaning. They affect the quality of the bingo board or the traits that your monster will have. Even the background color when you hatch the egg can give you hints, as yellow backgrounds mean a better bingo board compared to blue hatching backgrounds. Make sure you watch the egg patterns in Nest because they determine what kind of monster you'll hatch. For example, if you ever see this pattern, you could basically throw it right into a frying pan because that is an herbivore, that is something like an Aptonoth or an Apsaros. They're basically useless. But if you see this starry pattern, you should really consider yourself lucky because that is one of the several obtainable Elder Dragons in this game. If you see this pattern though, it could be something like a Royal Ludroth or another aquatic monster, maybe a Logeocris. Rare nests have a better chance to really get something good, so keep an eye out for those gold nests and go into them as soon as you can. Normal nests are usually a dirt color, silver nests are for side quests, and red nests are for high rank monsters. Once you unlock high rank, the gold nests can be either low rank or high rank. Every town has these big shrines, and if you donate money, you can get various stat buffs. Now what I like to do is I spend 10,000 zenny, which, yeah, admittedly it's a lot of money, but the thing is you get 99 minutes of 20% extra experience and even an attack buff. This is hugely helpful and I really wish I knew about this earlier in the story for some of those tough battles. You could also use various tokens and passes at the shrine that will give you other sorts of buffs. One of them even increases the chances of finding good eggs. But basically the way that I played Monster Hunter Stories is I always had an active buff while I was playing the game. Now I didn't find this out for quite a while, but you have a bestiary in your menu. This is basically like a Pokedex. Every time you kill or hatch a new monster that you haven't encountered or owned before, you'll be able to redeem an award. You could also see just how many monsters are in this game, which is a surprisingly large amount. Then again, Monster Hunter has been building up creatures now for over 10 years, so I guess it's to be expected. Resistances are surprisingly important, as I'm sure you know. There are some very tough fights throughout the story in Monster Hunter Stories. If you're fighting a fire type monster, such as like a Yingaruga or something, you'll probably want to get an armor that has a decent fire resist, a water type weapon, and have a monster with a nice balance of defense and attack. If you look at the color of the damage numbers, you can tell if something is effective or not. If the damage numbers are blue, then the attack is pretty much ineffective. It does like half damage or something like that. But if it's red and orange, then it's super effective. To go along with this, don't be afraid of grinding up some levels and upgrading your armor and your weapons. A great spot to level up, at least for part of low rank, is killing pink Rathians in the area before Gilkaron. Other good areas include the big tree in the jungle and many of the monsters at the bottom of Mount Therion. Side quests end up becoming critical as you progress because they're a good source of money, items, and experience. While you get monster materials for equipment by killing monsters, you also get rewards for other things from side quests. As an example, crafting combinations for medical items. The only way you can craft a mega potion and many of the other medical items is if you finish a side quest and get the recipe. You can also get certain weapons and armor from side quests. They're important and many of them are very easy, so it's very important that you don't forget your side quests. 
Throughout the story, you'll encounter various shakas and beelines. I highly recommend you kill these creatures because the shakas can give you large barrel bombs, which are very, very useful throughout the entire game. But most importantly, I think, is that the barrel bombs let you kill the barrel cats very, very easily. Now, typically, barrel cats are very resistant to damage and whatnot, and they usually run away after a turn or two. But if you use a barrel bomb on a high rank or a low rank barrel cat, you'll kill them automatically. And if it's a high rank barrel cat, you'll get 50,000 experience. These barrel cats are really amazing for grinding and farming experience. And what I like to do is I go to the tower and I farm the first five floors over and over again. Don't forget about the multiplayer in Monster Hunter Stories. You can get exclusive monsters from participating in online battles. Now, I'm not gonna give away which monsters that you can get, but by participating, you'll get one piece of an egg, and then if you win a battle, you can get three pieces of an egg, and once you get nine, you can put together an exclusive monster egg. A great way to keep your monsters gaining experience and collecting items at the same time is to use the Ally Expedition. You can send monsters out while you are away or you're not playing, and they'll gain a certain amount of experience and your hunter will get different loot. I like to focus my monsters on experience and pop in every once in a while while I'm not playing to send them out again. At the very least, you could send out your monsters in the morning, and then when you get home from work or school or whatever, you can collect your loot and experience. This is a really good way to get mats for combinations too, so you don't have to go and buy herbs. When you unlock ally rituals in the story, it's very important that you take advantage of them. If you have any duplicate monsters you don't want, use the ally ritual to transfer over useful genes to monsters that you actually do use. You can really buff up your monsters with new attacks and elements. For example, I gave my Pagrex here the fire element by giving him certain genes and jewels. If you bingo your genes with certain colors, you could also unlock additional damages and stat boosts. Thanks for watching everyone. A great resource right now is a website called mhkita, that's K-I-T-A dot com. I learned a lot from this website. They have all the quests, they have locations, they have other helpful info that you can use. Keep in mind, I made this video before the game actually came out internationally, so some small things may be a little bit different. Let me know your tips and tricks in the comments down below. And if you're still on the fence about stories, make sure you check out another video of mine, Six Reasons to Get Hype for Monster Hunter Stories.